You guys want to check out some amazing vehicles? That's exactly what we're going to do in this video. My son Jordan and I are here at SEMA 2023. MagnaFlow has invited us out and we're going to spend the next few days checking out all the cool off-road and overland vehicles and the new innovative products that they've made. This is going to be an exciting next few days and we're going to show you guys all kinds of cool stuff. The SEMA show is held every year in Las Vegas, Nevada and is one of the largest automotive trade shows in the world. It's a attended by over 150,000 people from the automotive industry. There are over 2,000 exhibiting companies, more than 3,000 new automotive products, and over 1,000 vehicles featured on display. And the best and most interesting four-wheel drive vehicles are the ones Jordan and I are on the hunt for. But to find them, we'll be doing a lot of walking and walking and walking. This event is massive, and you just can't see all of SEMA in one day. We are here for four days and we probably still won't see it all. All right, let's go check out some incredible off-road vehicles. One of the first vehicles we're going to take a look at is the Stepchild and this is Kevin and Brittany from Light Bright's amazing Jeep Wrangler JL and they have been wheeling this thing for years and it's gone through a whole lot of transformations but getting it ready for SEMA they've done this really cool paint job plus they've got some their new wheels on here and this thing is a beast. Go watch their videos they are constantly putting this thing through its paces. Sitting just next to the Stepchild Jeep is a great looking Ford Raptor. This truck has a vibrant orange wrap with blue accents and I don't think I would have ever thought to merge these two color combinations together, but it really works here. A very well done clean truck build. Next, we made our way to the Toyota exhibit to see what they've brought to the show. So in tribute to the release of the new Land Cruiser, Toyota has come up with this FJ45 1967 Land Cruiser. It's a little bit of old meets new. This thing's pretty slick. I really like the color. The interior, the tan leather interior is really nice and it's on 35 inch tires. All right, so you know I'm a Tacoma guy and seeing this silver 2024 Toyota Tacoma really caught my attention because this has a factory two inch lift in the front and a one inch lift in the back, 33 inch tires, and it comes with the Toyota, the roof rack and the bed rack. It definitely caught my eye and I think the 2024s are just really cool. So you definitely have to take a look at the new 2024 Land Cruisers. Jordan and I have kind of going back and forth about whether or not we like these. I kind of like them with the round headlights. He thinks the ones with the square headlights are a little bit nicer. But honestly, I'm excited to see Toyota come out with this. You know, there's a lot of great options on these Land Cruisers and I'm pretty excited about seeing them built out on the road and out on the trail. All right, so this FJ Bruiser was built for the return of the Land Cruiser to the US. It has 42 inch tires and it even has a NASCAR engine in it. This thing is pretty much a rock crawler that can go anywhere. It's super clean and it just looks great. Just next to the Toyota booth is the Lexus booth where they had several well-built GXs. These make a great overland vehicle and the aftermarket world has really expanded for these over the last few years and it was nice to see Lexus acknowledging that with this GX 550 build. Jordan and I are walking by the Lexus booth and we came across the GX 550 and we both said, wow, that actually looks really good in person. It's actually pretty sleek and I think this is the ultimate Overland Meeks luxury. I don't know what the color is called, but it's like this metallic goby. I really, really like this color. The interior on this is super plush. I'm telling you, if you wanted to do a long cross country trip, this wouldn't be a bad vehicle to do it in. Jordan and I were excited to see that Toyota and Lexus were embracing both the rock crawler and overland communities. I was a little disappointed though that Jeep didn't have a booth here this year at SEMA. I always get excited to see what new concepts they will bring. Thankfully, there were plenty of new built and old built Jeeps to admire like this incredible Wagoneer. I don't know if I've ever seen a better Wagoneer build than this one. Absolutely beautiful. There were many other off-road vehicles in this area, but we can't see them all, and Jordan and I need to both make our way over to the West Hall, where there is the bulk of the 4x4 vehicles. Just a few stops along the way. So I think I've mentioned it a few times. I'm a big fan of the Rivian. I've watched these things perform out on the trails, and they do really well. And this is the first Rivian SUV that I've seen that's been built out like this for overlanding. It's got bigger tires. It looks like it's got a lift, but it's got all the accoutrements on the top. But 
what's really cool is they've got an off-road trailer with, of course, has electric bikes on the back. I wouldn't mind taking this out on a trip. I mean, I played with Tonka trucks when I was a kid, and I would love to play with this one right here. This is a Jeep Gladiator, but it is not a Jeep Gladiator like you would know it. Underneath is a full-size Ram 2500, and they have put a Gladiator on top of it. It took two hoods to piece this thing together. It's got a massive lift, and it's got opening sides and storage. This thing, it's a beast, guys. I'm telling you, this is not like a real Gladiator, but I would love to go have some fun in this thing. All right, Jordan and I have been walking around all morning, and there are vehicles all over the place, but where the most off-road and overland vehicles are right here in the West Hall. We're gonna go in there and check them out. Plus, there should be some really cool, new, innovative products in there. Let's go check these out, guys. Over the years, I've seen many Ford Control Jeeps and I always love looking at them. This one caught our eye early on and it might be a little too early to say this is our favorite, but probably gonna be up there. This is a 1962 FC 170 and they just finished this build days ago. It's got an LS motor underneath, it's got one ton axles, it's got this really cool tray on the back. It's very well designed and the owner, Roy, this is like his 11th FC. So he has done many of these. The guy's got this thing's dialed. This is pretty slick, guys. That Ford Control was beautiful. But how about a six-door Jeep Wrangler 392? A lot of work and craftsmanship to make this functional and look good. But if you're not into six doors, how about six wheels? Under the hood of this 6x6 is a Hellcat putting out over 700 horsepower. This thing must be crazy to drive. There were a few six-wheel drive vehicles we came across during our time here. A lot of engineering to make up the rear differentials and make these a true 6x6. Six six. So I've never really given much thought to the Ranger, but after seeing this 2024 Lariat, this thing is super nice. I love the ARB front bumper on it. And then you come over to the rear and it has this super cool kitchen. This would be a really good addition to my Tacoma, but it looks a little bit expensive. I have to agree with Jordan. This Ranger on 35s is probably the best Ranger build I've seen. And that ARB slide out kitchen is very well designed. I bet we could totally make that work in the back of his truck. ARB had a few other nice things here on display as well. So there are a lot of Toyota Tundras here at SEMA. This one here at the ARB booth kind of caught our eye. The bumper on this one, this is an ARB bumper, has just the nicest fit and finish I've ever seen on an aftermarket Tundra bumper. They've done a great job with this. You can incorporate the lights, the winch, but the overall the paint on this thing, the whole truck, I take this thing out on an adventure. This thing's pretty nice. Jordan and I were walking around. We came across this Gladiator. This is really cool. This is kind of like a tribute to an old Forest Ranger truck. And the CO 1954 is just a little Easter egg. That desktop is in Colorado and they were established in 1954. But what we really like is the color. It's really unique. The canvas doors, the canvas PRP seats, the canvas back. This thing, this is a pretty cool truck. We're always looking for the very exciting builds here at SEMA, and I gotta say, this one probably tops the bill again. My good buddy, Tony Carvala, who a few years ago brought a Jeep to SEMA that had electric paint, this year he bought something extremely practical because when you're out in the desert, when you're going four-wheeling, what do you need most when you're out on the trail and it's hot outside? Some ice cream. He built an ice cream truck, and yes, it really does have an ice cream maker in the back that works. The really cool thing is, is that this could be a camper. So you've got a full Jeep Wrangler 4xe on 43 inch tires. You could turn this into an overland vehicle. Maybe an overland vehicle that makes ice cream. How cool would that be? Well, look who I found, guys. Marco, how are you, buddy? Good to see you, man. Dude, the Jeep is looking great. Man, you just did a massive, massive amount of work on the suspension. It just finished up like last today. Thursday. What did you do? A whole new long arm system with uh, the new RT4 coilovers. Yeah. It's really nice. It oh, new brakes. New brakes? The Delta Big Brake Kit. Okay. So, yeah. Well, how's it ride? <laughs> like a sofa. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And you are here at the James Baroud James booth. Baroud, yes. How's the new tent? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, what do you it, like most about it? It's super comfortable. Okay. And it's got the four season fabric. It, it's really awesome. And the 360 degree view, yeah. dude. Well, cool. Well, dude, it's good to see you, man. We're gonna hang out for a couple days. We gotta go get some coffee and some lunch or whatever. Yes. We're gonna go race NASCARs yes. tonight. We're gonna do that. It's always good to catch up with Marco and see what he's got going on with his Jeep. And yes, we will be racing NASCARs tonight, but more on that later. Now, there were many Ford Broncos this year once again at SEMA. And while there's still a lot of Jeep Wrangler builds around, it's apparent that the Bronco has made its mark and taken away some market share away from Jeep. 
This Bronco here at the Weston booth was a solid build. I really like the bumper with the dual swing out tire carrier that you can hide a small gas can and fire extinguisher behind. They said they're gonna have one of these coming out for the Wrangler, which I think is pretty unique. I also like the design of the roof rack and their front bumper. The fenders on this Bronco are ones that we saw on a few throughout the show here at SEMA, and in my opinion, this is how they should be designed from the factory. Jordan and I really like the paint on this Bronco. Again, with the blue and the orange, there's just something about it that goes together. This was a well-built Overland Bronco, and the fenders on here are pretty unique. I'd be curious to know, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below about these. This beautiful Defender here has been converted to electric, and we saw a lot of electric conversions at SEMA this year. So we were just walking by, we thought this was just a cool Defender, a nice clean one. Turns out it's fully electric and it's on air ride suspension. So the airbags you can raise lower, you can level it, and uh, it's, this thing only has four miles on it. It's like brand new, it's super clean, and it's an Australian company. This old green Jeep here has been converted to electric as well, and they did a great job with it. But if you look inside, you can see that it has a Tesla steering wheel. Something tells me that this Jeep has some serious acceleration. This here is a Ford Mustang Mach-E, and I've owned a few Mustangs over the years, and I'm still kind of getting used to them being an electric vehicle. However, this one has been built to be a rally vehicle, and I think it looks great. I am curious on how they have the front winch mounted into the front trunk and the way that they've routed the winch line. My hope is that this is actually functional. It's somehow mounted to the frame. Okay, let's take a break from looking at vehicles for just a moment and let's look at a few innovative products that we found very interesting. We're keeping our eye for really cool products here at SEMA and we came by the Sea Sucker booth and they have these suction cups with all these different accessories for mounting stuff just about anywhere you can put a suction cup. These are really heavy duty suction cups. We've got sinks, we've got tables, look at all this little stuff you can mount on your windshields. We've got cup holders, but for me doing YouTube videos, how cool would it be to be able to mount my camera right on a fender like this? These things are pretty slick guys. All right guys, here's a pretty innovative rooftop tent, which is tough to find these days, but this one is on hinges and it's an actuator. So this raises up and down with a remote, but basically what you do is you fold in each of these sides, then you press a remote and that collapses all the way down. And the other really cool thing is check out the roof. You've got like this really cool like skylight in there. It's a hard shell tent, folds down pretty small. I like it, it's kind of cool. Very clever. So Jordan and I were just talking, we're like, there's not a whole lot of Toyota 4Runners out here. And then we turned the corner and there's this one, but it's not the Toyota 4Runner that caught our interest. It's this drop rack system. This is really cool. I'm told this will hold 175 pounds. If you got kayaks, even a rooftop tent you wanna take on and off, this could be a pretty good option. I love seeing innovation like this, guys. All right, not really an off-road or overland product, but more of a camping product. This is the Thule Outset Tent, and it's really interesting. It's, it's very innovative. It folds all the way up, and then it hooks on to the trailer hitch of your vehicle. Cool thing about that is you're not putting all that weight on top of your vehicle, but also if you wanted a base camp, you could drop this off, unhitch, go have a good time, go fishing, go do your thing, and this will stay at camp. You come back, hook it up, and then you can roll out. From a camping perspective, that's pretty cool. The last product that we found interesting were these inflatable chair and tables that Jordan said were very comfortable. And how cool would it be to have an entire set of patio furniture at camp that just deflates and packs down really small? That's pretty clever. There were a couple Sprinter vans at SEMA I noticed this year, and I'm not sure if I've ever seen a Sprinter van at SEMA, or maybe now that I'm an owner of one, I'm just taking more notice, but it was great to see folks doing some really custom builds with these. I'm digging this red wrap for sure. There were lots of full-size trucks on display at SEMA, and the great thing about a full-size rig is they are very comfortable on long trips, usually have very high payload capacities, so converting them into an overland vehicle is easily done and doesn't put a lot of stress on it. Extended fuel tanks can be installed, usually to increase your range, and because there are so many trucks sold in America, there is no shortage for aftermarket parts. There was one specific concept that both Jordan and I gravitated to. All right, so we're here at the AV booth. We've seen a lot of full-size trucks today, but one of our favorites is this AV concept. It's a GMC Sierra Grande. It's on 40-inch tires, has a huge flatbed in the back, really cool snorkel, and we love this paint. This thing's super cool. 
There were a few really nice newer Land Rover Defenders that had been built very well for overlanding on display. And there were some of the older Defenders, which I think are the good looking ones. These ones had the Cadillac engine conversions, but there was something other than a Defender that I was on the lookout for. So guys, when Jordan and I were driving out here to Vegas, the one vehicle that I said I was the most interested to see is the Ineos Grenadier. And so far we've only seen one. I was hoping to see a whole bunch, but I think this is going to be a vehicle that overlanders and off-roaders are really going to kind of start to gravitate to. Got solid axles front and rear. This is a well-built vehicle and hopefully we'll start to see a lot of cool aftermarket parts for this thing. I like this one. This is nice. It's comfortable. I need some, ooh, I need some of these seats in my Jeep. Unfortunately, that was the only one I saw at the show, but maybe next year there'll be a few more to check out. I'm really intrigued by these. Day one at SEMA was incredible. We saw hundreds of amazing vehicles and I'll bet we walked at least 10 miles today. And we've still got more to show you. But this evening we were invited to go out with the folks from McLeod to join them for the NASCAR experience. I've never done anything like this and to be able to go out on the Las Vegas Speedway at night under the lights was pretty incredible. Now I thought that they would be driving us around the track or at the very least there would be somebody riding passenger, but no, they let us drive these NASCARs by ourselves around the track going almost 150 miles an hour. Now, there was somebody up in the stands that was coaching us, but what an amazing experience. I will never forget this. Jordan and I had a blast. All right, guys, there's cars racing all around, and Jordan just hopped in his. He's getting ready to go. This is super exciting. I cannot wait. This is going to be a blast. Here we go. Here goes, Jordan. track at the same time yeah dude that was super cool that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. okay uh what do you guys think one who was faster jordan or me yeah jordan yeah, maybe <laughs> just by that one so. well good morning guys uh that's a jeep with a carbon fiber hood that's kind of cool uh it's Early morning here at SEMA, and Jordan and I had a blast last night at the NASCAR experience. A huge thanks to McLeod for inviting us out there for that. Today, we're gonna walk around outside, check out some of these vehicles, and then we still got a few more inside that we wanna go check out. There are so many great vehicles here. I know we're not gonna be able to see them all, but we're definitely gonna try to see and show you guys as many as we can. Now, before we go look at more vehicles real quick, make sure you check us out over at trailrecon.com. If you need gear to outfit your vehicle for your next adventure, that's the place to go. All right, let's go check out some cool vehicles. There are easily a few hundred vehicles staged outside the convention center, and some of them are almost more artistic than they are functional. But I appreciate the work and the craftsmanship that goes into building something like this. And I'm sure there are some things that we can learn from these types of builds that we can apply to our off-road. Here are just a few of the vehicles that were outside that caught our eye. Jordan and I were talking and there's something that kind of happens at SEMA that most people don't realize. And let me start by saying Jordan and I are car nuts. We never tire of checking out amazing vehicles. But at SEMA, there is so much to take in that you find yourself glancing at what otherwise would be a vehicle that would totally wow you and you just walk by hoping that maybe you'll get a chance to look at it later. But the truth is you likely won't because you'll run out of time. Now this green gladiator here is worth stopping and checking out. This one checks a lot of boxes when you're talking about adventure. Overlanding, rock crawling, this looks like it'll get it done. There were a couple Toyotas that also caught our eyes. Jordan really liked this clean Land Cruiser and for me, Troopies are always a hit. 
Just around the corner is a vehicle that was probably getting the most attention outside, and some of you may recognize it. This is the station wagon from the National Lampoon Vacation movie, although I thought they totaled this. All right, time to go inside and see if we can find some really nice classics, and there's an old friend I'm looking for. So many of you know I have a 1974 Cherokee at home, Project Prickly Pear, and it has been giving me a whole lot of fits, but it's still a work in progress, but I think I found my favorite vehicle here at SEMA. This is a beautiful Cherokee Chief. This has been extremely well done with a lot of details. The grill, the interior engine bay has just been cleaned up. Some of the details in the interior are just immaculate. My Cherokee will never look this good, but maybe in a few years, I can somehow get to this level. Okay, next are not classics, but they are a twist on old classics. These are two trucks that have been converted into two-door replicas of the old Chevy full-size Blazer and Jimmy. They are incredible trucks, and I'll bet they would be a ton of fun out on the trail. But for over $150,000, I don't think I'll be buying one of these anytime soon. We didn't see a lot of International Scouts, but this one was very unique. Yep. That says 392 on the grill. I would love to hear them fire this thing up. Now, this is not an off-road vehicle, but you have to admit, it's extremely cool. The amount of work that must have gone into building this is crazy to comprehend. There are a lot of really great touches to this, but I liked the black and white TV inside. This thing is super unique. Oh, and the last classic I wanted to share with you is this beautiful Toyota FJ we saw outside in the parking lot. Clean, simple, and lightly modified. Very nice. Now, some of you may recognize this Samurai. This was built by my good friend Nate from Dirt Lifestyle. He filmed the whole process and it was a massive undertaking. It was great catching up with him and talking about his build and hopefully he and I will be connecting out on the trail together soon. Here was something very unique we found as we were walking around. This artist loves to paint, so he wraps his Jeep and then he paints it. I can't think of a better way to customize your Jeep. And the cool thing is he will eventually remove the wrap and do it all over again. Now here is hands down one of the best Jeep interiors I have ever seen. This Jeep was shipped to Germany to have the interior work done. Everything from the roll bars to the dash to the doors, the seats completely covered in amazing leather. The paint and remote control convertible were pretty cool as well. All right, Jordan, we've seen a whole lot of vehicles over the last couple days. Yeah. It's time to pick your favorites. Give me your top two. It's almost too hard to pick, but if I had to, it would probably be that Jeep Ford Control or the Ford Ranger that we saw. Ah, good picks. Good picks. I like them. What about the Ranger specifically made that be number one? I just love the way that it was built. Definitely the bumper on it is very clean. The ARB, like the pull-out kitchen in the back, that was pretty cool, and I just love the wheels on so it. So you got a little bit of inspiration for your Tacoma, possibly? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, All I right. like those wheels cool. a lot. How's SEMA been for you? It's a lot to take in, a lot of walking around, but it's a lot of cool stuff to see. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, now I gotta pick my two favorite vehicles after all the ones that we've seen here, and we have seen a lot. And it's tough because that Cherokee Chief was gorgeous, and I would love to have that thing. But honestly, I think if I could drive away with one off-road vehicle today, it would be Jordan's number two pick. It's my number one pick, and that is that Ford Control. That thing was awesome. That would be so fun to take out on an adventure. I loved it. SEMA 2023 has not disappointed. We have had a blast. We put in a lot of miles on our feet, but we've seen some amazing vehicles, and we got to talk to a lot of great people. A huge thanks to MagnaFlow for inviting us out this year. It has been a whole lot of fun, and it's been great having my son Jordan here with me, and I hope we get to do this again. Guys, thanks for watching.